Fenty Beauty just dropped their new We're Even Hydrating Concealer, and today we're gonna find out whether or not it's worth the purchase. There is already slight creasing. I think if you're looking for a truly crease-proof, transfer-proof, waterproof concealer, Overall, I am going to rate this a solid Hi gorgeous, welcome back to my beauty room. Today is an exciting new launch. I don't usually do dedicated concealer reviews, but I have a feeling that a lot of y'all are interested in this one. So let's go ahead and just jump into some of the claims of this concealer. Right off the bat, it does retail for a whopping $30, which I feel like is kind of pricey for a concealer, specifically one that is mainly meant as an under eye concealer and not one that's meant to be extremely versatile. And of of course it's Fenty so there's a wide range of shades that you can choose from. It's apparently supposed to be a 12 hour hydrating long wear skin like natural finish concealer plus it's also supposed to be transfer and waterproof. These brands really like to talk themselves up especially because I've experienced it. Fenty has claimed the same things for some of their complexion products and they don't end up being transfer or waterproof so I don't really know if I trust this one but I guess that's what we're trying to find out today so I'll jump right into the application process, let you know some of my initial thoughts, and do a little bit of a wear test for the concealer just to see if it fades or creases throughout the day. And make sure you watch until the end of this video to find out the true tea on this concealer and decide whether or not it's worth the purchase. So this is the Fenty Beauty Concealer. I love this packaging. It looks just like their skin tint. You open it up and it has this doe foot applicator that's supposed to be mimicking like how you use your fingers, which is really cool. And then the color and shade that I have is in the shade 300N, which is close to my skin tone, but slightly brighter and lighter, not by too much. So I can use this as a highlight on my face. I can also use this under my eyes and potentially can use this to cover some scarring and acne spots. I am up close and personal with y'all. You can see my eye bags, you can see my zits and my pores. I did apply on foundation already. I'm using the Laura Mercier foundation, which I think a review should be up on this before this video. I've been influenced, I admit I'm a sucker, and I bought the damn foundation. Again, just a reminder, I'm in the shade 300N, so I'm just gonna do this side. This is more of a medium coverage, so I'm not afraid to use a lot of this. I'll just do a little bit there. I'm using the Hourglass kind of like paw concealer brush, and we're just gonna do a blend. I try not to put too much concealer up over here because that's where my crease is and hopefully that will prevent it from harsh creasing. But any concealer creases on me so I don't really think this is going to be any different. Wow, that blended out so easily with the brush and the color is really nice. I think it's slightly more brightening than my skin tone, but it's not too bright and it's also not too dark. So I really like the color and it looks really nice under the eyes. I would say it's more of like a luminous natural finish under the eyes and it does give medium coverage. It's not really covering my dark spots though. I think that's where you would kind of need more color corrector, but it does brighten under the eyes really nicely. This is the side without the Fenty concealer, and this is the side with the Fenty concealer. Let me know what you think. Okay, so initial thoughts, I love the application of this. It was so easy to blend, it was decent coverage. I do feel that it's not as hydrating as like the House Labs concealer or the Colfi concealer under my eyes. It's not as glowy. I think this is definitely more of like a natural satin finish, a little bit of luminance to it. I don't see creasing as quickly. I don't have powder on yet. And I just feel like it slightly enhances some of my wrinkles and fine lines and texture that most concealers don't really do. I don't mind it though, just because it gives me more of a flawless 
flawless under eye on camera, but in person, it's not that flawless if I'm being real. So let me go ahead and do the other side. I'm gonna try to apply on the same amount. I love this applicator. It's just so, it makes sense. It feels so easy to use and it doesn't take like too much product on. Do a little bit more of a blend with this. Wow, yeah, it just blends out so freaking nice. Yeah, I'm really happy with how that looks. I feel like since this isn't overly glowy, this would also make a decent concealer for just like small spots here and there. So I'm gonna try it that way too. But quickly, I'm gonna apply on powder before it causes any creasing. I always like to apply on a small amount of powder, so we're going with the one size. This can easily look cakey if you're not careful. So I'm taking a very fluffy brush that's supposed to be a blending eyeshadow brush and just tapping my brush in there and then that's too much. So we're gonna tap off the excess, kind of pat it on the under eyes, add a little bit more. And this is the difference without powder. With powder, I think it makes a huge difference. Same thing on the other side. Wow, that's not too bad. Sometimes when I apply on powder on top of my concealer, if I accidentally apply on too much, it looks really cakey. My under eyes are looking really good right now. Ooh. I do have some acne spots right here and right here and the concealer doesn't seem to cover or stay on top of those spots and with the powder it does kind of cake up around those really small acne bumps so keep that in mind but it personally doesn't bother me. These are the acne spots that I have and I wish my camera was even more focused if I go closer but in person it does break up around these areas but the under eye itself is really nice. I'm really happy with the results. I'm gonna apply on concealer on the rest of my face. This looks like a lot, but again, it's medium coverage, so I feel like it's okay to apply on a lot. It doesn't get too heavy on the skin. And I'm blending out the concealer on the skin. Yeah, it's medium coverage for sure, but I just love how this blends out on the skin. I really like the shade match for me. Of course, it's better for under my eyes, but I also kind of, you know, can use it to highlight the rest of my face and give me a little bit of coverage at the same time, which is nice. Using a foundation brush for this area. So it's been about an hour, I just ate lunch, and I noticed that my concealer is actually creasing pretty heavily. I'm just gonna assume it's partially the powder, it's partially the fact that I have a wrinkle here, it's partially because of the concealer itself. So if you're looking for like a magical crease-proof concealer, I don't think this is it. This is a concealer that you may have to like, you know, do some tricks here and there with. It's really hard to show on camera. I'm like so close, but I don't feel like it's showing enough. In natural lighting, it looks really nice, but in the bathroom mirror, I was like, ooh, it looks a little cakey under the eyes. Okay, let's cut to eight hours later. I did touch up after the one hour mark and truthfully, it's not looking any better under my eyes. I feel like my under eyes just look very heavy. They look very cakey and I have under eye concealers that don't make my under eyes look like this by the end of the day. You could blame the powder, you could blame the technique, but again, I've tried other concealers like the Colfi concealer and it doesn't look like this at the end of the day. So I'm not gonna lie, I am actually kind of torn on what my real opinions are on this concealer. I think it's gonna be one of those situations where I do need a little bit more time to see if I reach for this over my other concealers. And I have reviewed so many concealers already, so so if you want to see a video where I reviewed a bunch of vital concealers, I'll link it somewhere in the card so you can check that out. If you're on the hunt for a new concealer for acne prone textured oily skin, then you're going to want to watch this video before you shop because I tried some of the most viral concealers and you best believe I'm going to share with you my real unfiltered review and at the end, I'm going to let you know which ones are my personal favorite. But I am trying to decide whether or not this 
this, you know, competes with any of those. I would say that I really do like it though, and I would recommend it overall, but is it my favorite? Only time will tell with that one. I think if you're looking for a truly crease-proof, transfer-proof, waterproof concealer, pass. <laughs> past. It also isn't as hydrating as it claims to be. I feel like the claims are kind of contradicting. It's called a hydrating concealer, but the finish is natural. So I think as a consumer, you might expect this to be a glowy hydrating finish, but it's not. I think the hydrating portion comes from the ingredients. It's supposed to be really hydrating on the eyes, but the finish isn't like a normal hydrating concealer. And I say that because I have oily skin and it seemed to be pretty dry under my eyes. It didn't look, you know, like the typical glowy hydrating concealer. I also made sure to use a very small amount of the one size powder and yet it's still kind of caked up a little bit. And the previous days before I used the hourglass powder, which isn't as mattifying as the one size and I still had the same issue. So I don't think it's the powder that's the issue. I think it really is the concealer. But overall, I do think it's a long lasting concealer. I think the coverage is great. Medium coverage. I love the shade. It's so easy to blend on the skin. I love the packaging. I love the applicator. So it's a good concealer, but if you're looking for it to do magical things, it's probably not going to do magical things. Overall, I am going to rate this a solid three out of five because it's an average concealer. It's not amazing. It's not phenomenal, but I think that depending on who you are as a person, you might really like this. But I did have to knock off two points just because even for me, I have oily skin and it's not that hydrating and I feel like the name hydrating is a little bit misleading because they might be referring to the ingredients but in terms of how it looks on the eyes it does not look hydrating and then I did just knock off a point for those of you who might you know be looking for a crease proof transfer proof waterproof concealer and this claims to be all of those things and it's not those things man I feel like I was kind of harsh on this concealer but I promise you I promise you it's not bad I just need to consider it compared to all of the other concealers I've tried, what makes this unique and special, you know what I'm saying? And I want to be as honest and real as possible. And I feel like there are just so many freaking concealers launching and just in general concealers on the market, but it's such a competitive space that you really have to have the standout quality to be special to me and to be something that I think is worth running out and buying right away. And this just isn't it. It's good, just like every other concealer, but you might be able to live without it truthfully, especially if you already have a concealer that you love. But anyways, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I do have so many other review videos and shopping videos, so if you haven't watched those, I will link it somewhere in the cards. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll catch you on the flip side.